This is the Wimam, and this sells for $299. Some of the audio enthusiasts consider this a great value, but what if I told you this is a terrible value and a terrible mistake if you bought one? There is a better option from a well-reputed Japanese audio manufacturer for less money. And what if I told you what others are not saying? Yes, this comes with cybersecurity concerns. Let's talk about it. Welcome back. And my name is Ted and I'm a techie. We cover anything and everything tech in this channel. Audio, video equipment, electronic gadgets, and computer gear. I help you make informed and educated decision in choosing a product. This Wim amplifier is one of the most hyped audio gear in recent months. What if I told you there is an even better option for less money. This is a product from a very reputed Japanese audio manufacturer that is even better in every terms and it costs less. I'm talking about the Yamaha RN303 streaming amplifier and it sells for $250 right now in Amazon. Isn't that a terrific value? Even Yamaha lists the MSRP at $329 in their website. Even at that price, this is a terrific value. Let's do a comparison of the features of these two amplifiers and find out which one wins. Talking about the weight, this one weighs about four pounds and this one weighs about 16 pounds. Even in terms of the heft, this one is a terrific value. Talking about the minimum RMS power output, of these uh, units. The Wim Mini does not specify a minimum RMS output, so we don't know. The Yamaha is rated at 100 watts per channel at 8 ohms. So that's the minimum RMS output this can produce. Talking about the max power at 8 ohms, this one outputs 60 watts per channel, and this one is capable of outputting 100 and 40 watts per channel. Yes, my dear friends, it's 140 watts per channel max output. And talking about the 4 ohms output, this one outputs about 120 watts, and the Yamaha outputs about 150 watts per channel. Even though the numbers are lesser in the Yamaha, it doesn't feel like that. Speaking about the displays, the Wim Mini does not have any displays. All it has is a LED light here, which turns color based on the input which is super annoying to know what input is selected just looking at the LED. But the Yamaha has a LCD display which tells you the volume, your input selection, or even what song is playing. And speaking about the speaker outputs, the Wim Mini has one pair of speaker outputs. It could be either set up as a mono or stereo. And the Yamaha comes with two pairs of speaker outputs, A and B. You could either run A or B or A plus B, and by wiring is also possible. Speaking about the inputs, the Wim Mini has three inputs. One is a HDMI arc, an optical input, and a line level input. That's it. The Yamaha comes with six inputs, three analog line level inputs, one phono preamp input, and two digital inputs. One is an optical, and one is an RCA. Who listens to radio stations these days? Yes, there are people who listens to FM stations, and the Yamaha comes with AM FM radio tuner, but the Wim Mini does not. And if you are a vinyl enthusiast, you could spin records with the Yamaha. And the preamp on this is no slouch. Some of the standalone phono preamps cost more than this whole unit itself. So the preamp that comes with this is hmm, terrific. Talking about the amplification, the Wim Mini is a class D amplification using a Texas Instrument TPA3255 chipset on it. And this one is pure class AB circuitry. And speaking about the digital to analog converter, the DACs inside them, the Wim Mini comes with an ESS Sabre DAC. The Yamaha comes with the Burr Brown DAC. And the Burr Brown DAC inside this amplifier can handle 192 kilohertz, 24 bit which is more than enough for lossless audio. Talking about the file formats, and these are the file formats each of these amplifiers support. How about I want to tweak the sound? Yes, we're talking about equalization. The Wim Mini comes with some preset equalization and also has a 10-band equalizer as well as a 4-band 
parametric equalizer. And the Yamaha comes with tone controls, bass and treble. Old school, and that's pretty much you need. I don't think you need to go fancy on that. Can I connect subwoofers to them? Of course, yeah. The Blue Mini comes with one subwoofer output and has a bass management. You can do low pass and high pass filtering on that. But even though the Yamaha does not have bass management, it has stereo pre out. So you can connect two pair of stereo subwoofers to get that. Mm. Talking about Bluetooth, yes, both these units support Bluetooth protocol. How about AirPlay? Yes, they both support AirPlay too. How about Chromecast? Yes, they both do. Spotify Connect? Yes, they both do. Tidal Connect? Yes, they both do. Alexa Cast? Yes, they both do. DLNA? Streaming from your local network? They both do. Internet Radio? Yes, they both do. And the Vim Mini does one extra thing, which is QPlay. I have never heard about it, so I'll just ignore it. And the most important thing that the Vim Mini supports is Squeeze Light, which is nothing but the Squeeze Box client. You know, the Logic that Squeeze Box client, that product got discontinued 12 years back. Yeah, I mean it. 12 years back. Logitech discontinued that product. And there is one, only one guy in the whole YouTube world which praises that. And last week, March 19th, Logitech shut down their servers of Squeezebox service. The My Squeezebox service is no longer al alive. And the whole Logitech Squeezebox service has been run by open source communities. But after the shutdown of the servers, if you go and look at their GitHub repository, there is just one guy, one guy maintaining that whole repository. So the security concern I talked about is this. The squeeze box or the squeeze light client on this amplifier, which is way, way, way outdated. There has not been a new release after 2019 for the squeeze light. So this is running a very, very old software, which nobody uses, which is a security concern. So you should avoid this like a plague. Talking about the other good features, the Vimini does support Cobus, Amazon Music, and Amazon HD, which this amplifier does not support, but we've got options through AirPlay and Chromecast and Bluetooth. Talking about the remotes, yes, the Yamaha remote is much, much better. There are buttons for each of the inputs and the speaker selection, the volume, Everything is in here in terms of button layout. The Vim Mini remote just has one single button, yeah, for the input selection. You gotta keep pressing this, and hey, if you're lucky and you can read colors of LEDs, yeah, this is a terrible idea. And talking about the app itself, the Vim Mini, you need to download an app called Vim Home. The Yamaha comes with the Music Cast app, which is, you know, much better in terms of reliability than any others I've experienced. With those apps, when you have more than one devices, I mean, the same kind of devices. Yeah, if you're going with Vim, you need to have Vim family devices. And if you're going with Yamaha, you need to have Yamaha family devices. You can play the music throughout the home using the app. You can link them all together and play the same music throughout the house. That's possible with both these systems. How about we talk about how they perform? This one, like you know, it only delivers 60 watts. And uh, there are two sets of speakers that I normally run the amplifiers with to begin with. The first one will be my Kef LS50 Meta. Uh, those are a little hard to drive speakers. The Vim Mini kind of managed to drive it, but it cannot drive more than what the speaker is capable of. Yeah, if you are looking for loudness, no, you're not going to get that. It can drive for medium volume, that's it. And it runs out of juice. And the Yamaha can run them at concert levels. Yes, I'm serious about it. Yeah, this one has got a lot of power. Both these amps are pretty neutral. They don't exhibit a character of themselves. and if you have known Yamaha products, they are pretty neutral. 
unlike any recovering audio file would say, hey, this has a house sound. And no, Yamaha does not have a house sound. It is neutral in its presentation. And unlike any other Yamahas I've seen, this is pretty neutral as well. Talking about the Wim Mini, this is neutral and a bit to the cooler side, I would say. The Yamaha kind of has a little bit of that bass or bodied bass, I would say. That's all because of the power it delivers. Since this one cannot deliver that power, mm, no, no. So, so yeah, it's pretty neutral, but the dynamics aren't there. Talking about the soundstage, this is where these are totally different. The Wim amp does not produce a wider soundstage. The soundstage is basically confined to the boundaries of the speakers itself, left and right. And you don't see that broadening out of the speakers. The Yamaha's, man, the soundstage goes wider, a lot much wider and even deeper. It produces a lot of dynamics in the soundstage, but the Wimmini struggles to, you know, and it just confines to the boundaries of the speakers. That's about it. And speaking about some of the music I've been listening to to test out these amplifiers, one of them is, it's called the Planets, and the track itself is called the Jupiter. It is by Berlin Philharmonic and conducted by Gustav Holst. And this music on the Wim Mini, mm, there isn't any dynamics to that. To the music itself. Now there are a lot of uh, brass instruments in this, like trumpets, baritones, and horns. And the Wimbini struggles to deliver all of the dynamics into the speakers because it's it's not that powerful. And the Yamahas were able to deliver them with ease. All those horns were lively, and the dynamics was you know, hmm, brilliant. And the other song I've been listening to is called the Java Jive. This is by the Manhattan Transfer Band. And this song is, it's all about the soundstage. Because this one starts with a guitar string on the left side of the speaker. And uh, the chorus itself is, you know, broader in the stage. And as soon as the male main voice comes in, you can hear the, hear the main voice on the left or right side of the speakers and the female voice on the other side of the speaker. So this song with this Wim Mini, mm, I can see that, you know, the soundstage is very, very narrow, but the Yamaha's, man, it was, it was broad. Oh, you might ask, this one has HDMI arc, but this one does not. Yes, you can connect this directly to your TV. You can also connect this to your TV using the optical up. There are options, but hey, can I control this Wim amp using my TV remote control? Yeah, but the experience is not that great. It is slow to respond to the commands. One of the drawbacks of using such a stereo receiver with your TV is that it doesn't support the protocols like Dolby Digital or DTS. So none of the home theater protocols are supported by this. It only supports PCM. Let's say you want lossless audio playback from your TV, which is not possible. Let's say you got an Apple TV with you, which outputs lossless audio, but you need to connect the Apple TV to your TV, and then the TV output HDMI into the Wim app. And the TV will downgrade all the signal, and it is not going to output lossless audio. So it is a bit of a wash having that HDMI. So if your use case is more into TV watching, then I would suggest going with a full-fledged AV receiver. And for 300 bucks, you will get Dolby Digital, DTS, even the latest protocol like Atmos. So that is the best way to go. And how does the app perform? The Wim Home versus the Music Cast. The Music Cast, as I told you, is solid. And I've not come across any other apps that, that, is, that just works but the Wim app the Wim home app has some issues and uh, i've talked about this in my Wim mini review as well there are a few annoyances that you know Wim could have avoided it but yeah it's there it's it's not a perfect app and i've talked about the downsides of the Wim app in the Wim amp review itself so just look for that and also i've got a separate review of the yamaha 
receiver. So yes, the look for that and the link should be below as well. Two hundred and fifty bucks, two hundred and ninety nine bucks, and this one comes with a load of features. A pretty good phono preamp, six inputs, two speaker outs, amazing. As you might have come to a conclusion by now, if it's my money, I'd buy the Yamaha any day. And don't forget about the Win Mini giveaway, guys. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, and once I hit the one thousand subscriber mark, I'm going to give away the Win Mini. To one of you lucky subscribers, I'll choose them randomly. If you would like to purchase any of the gear I talked about, the links are right below in the description section. And also, if you would like to support this channel, please join my Patreon. The link is also below. Thanks for joining, and I will see you next time.